Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today I'm going to answer the question, what is a null hypothesis? Okay, uh, so let's get started here. A hypothesis is a statement about a population. It's, remember, it's a statement about a population, not a sample, a population. That may be either correct or incorrect. Inference studies are used to determine whether a hypothesis is correct or incorrect. So inference studies are designed to help us understand, is the hypothesis correct or incorrect? Again, an inference study uses two hypotheses that cover 100% of all, all possibilities. One of the hypotheses is denoted as H0 and is referred to as the null hypothesis. So every inference or hypothesis test will have two hypotheses, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And so, uh, keep that in mind as we go through this lecture. The null hypothesis for inference studies will always include the equal sign. Why? Because null means zero, nada, the same. Null means the same, no difference between the averages. I have two distributions, their averages are exactly the same. That's null. Null means equal. So, the null hypothesis, again, must have an equal sign. One of the more common null hypotheses is, uh, ab, pop, remember, this uh, Greek symbol mu means population average. So population average 1 equals population average 2, or mu 1 equals mu 2. You should always use the symbology of populations, not samples. Because when we do hypothesis tests, I don't care if the samples are different. I want to know if the populations are different. So you always write this in terms of population. You should never write x bar 1 equals x bar 2 because x bar is a symbol for sample average. So again, always use the parametric symbols there, or the parameter symbols, population symbols. All right, remember the null hypothesis will traditionally contain the equal sign, as we already mentioned. This leaves three possibilities for H0 or the null hypothesis. Mu1, which again is the population average. Mu1 equals Mu2, or Mu1 is greater than or equal to Mu2, or Mu1 is less than or equal to Mu2. These are all the possibilities for a null hypothesis. Now we could also make this sigma. So if we're doing a hypothesis test for uh, variation, we could put sigma1 equals sigma2, etc. But uh, for this lecture, I just put down the averages. All right, congratulations. Now you know what a null hypothesis is. Our next lecture will be on the alternative hypothesis. Hopefully you learned something new here. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'd love to hear from you. And remember to put the like button on there. If you got anything out of this at all, please hit the like button. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, uh, if you have any interest in our ASQ certification preparation classes, you can, uh, I have a website for every certification class, so it tells you all about those. Uh, so ch pick one of your choosing here, maybe pause this video and pick the one you're interested in. Go learn more about our classes. We'd love to have you as a student. All right, congratulations, you've completed this uh, lecture, and I hope to hear from you soon. Have a great day. Goodbye.